Hi everyone, uh, first things first before we get started, I just wanted to wish everybody um, and I hope everyone had a, um, a wonderful new year, um, 2022, you know, first day of the year and um, uh, and yeah, I just hope everyone had, had a really safe one and um, you know, you uh, spent it with your loved ones and family and uh, made 2022 uh, be uh, be a happy and healthy one for you and your your families and your you know your loved ones and um, and yeah so I thought today starting off the new year that I would um, basically go over um, all of the currency pairs um, regardless whether I trade them fundamentally or not just really do a, a bit of a deeper dive into um, the process right and just keep repeating the process over and over again and by the way guys. Um, uh, uh, you can find all of the processes, of course, um, in the relevant channels. So, for example, you know, stop hunt manipulations. Uh, click on that. Capture pain relief. Click on that. You know, we've got the uh, the setups there, um, all, all written out for you. And go over the course, etc. Um, and the courses, and uh, yeah, all the all the information is all in here. Anyways, um, so yeah. Let me just go over the technicals. I'm not going to go over the fundamentals so much uh, today. I'm going to go over the fundamentals probably in the next uh, day or two. But nothing's really changed fundamentally in, in, in terms of, you know, the pairs that we're looking to trade in, in the direction, right? Nothing's really changed over uh, since um, over the past uh, couple of weeks. So I'm going to I'm going to probably do both sides of the market. Actually, matter of fact, no, just to cut this video down. I'm going to um, really kind of stick to um, the direction that I would likely trade. And I'm going to get into, again, the fundamentals so much, but um, and, unless obviously it is a pair that I am uh, fundamentally uh, uh, trading. But if I'm not trading it, then um, I will probably make a, a judgment call as to which way I probably think prices may want to uh, may want to go. But anyways, um, just so that you can see, you know, um, the supply and demand zones and also as well, just again, a quick reminder from a technical pattern perspective, you know, we have several patterns um, that we're looking at, <clears throat> you know, um, and again, go through the, 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 the course. But one of the things I want, I want to just emphasize is, is just is try to combine. Um, you don't necessarily have to, but try to combine um daily and weekly supply and demand zones with your CPR yeah and your and your stop hunts yeah meaning that let's say for example you know we know basically that these would be demand zones higher uh higher lows and lower highs higher lows in the, in the, in a, um in a move that's uh, trending higher like that is the area where you want to look for potentially a buy trade. I'd say it's always going to work out, right? But the point being is that that's where we know that there was, if we understand fundamentally what was driving prices higher, once we get a pullback into that zone, that's the area where the first area where we want to look to see if, um, you know, prices uh, will, you know, react if that is a bargain price. Again, it was definitely a bargain there because it made new highs. So if prices come back down here again, that's where we want to look for buy trades. Now, combining that with uh, a CPR and stop hunts, meaning that on a say, let's say for example, we're looking at a daily, a weekly time frame chart, and this is a demand zone. The question then becomes, or, or what we should look to also do is combine um, intraday um, if there are any uh, CPR or stop hunt zones, right? Or stop hunt uh, trade setups. So as prices start to come down into this zone, then you can go into the lower time frames and then look for um, a, a stop hunt setup um, on an intraday, whether it's an hourly, a fifteen minute, you know, four hourly, etc. And it's because you have really the higher time frame um, uh, setup as far as value. Yeah, um, we know that this has to be um, a, an area of interest. It's not going to be here. It's not going to be here. It's not going to be there. It's picking and choosing which areas you're looking to. Uh, get involved in and if this is the higher low then that should be from a higher time frame perspective um, uh, a, a great location to look for either a buy trade um, you know just just normally or um, to combine that with 
some sort of CPR or, or stop hunt. And of course, stop hunts and CPR setups, technical setups can be traded individually, right? They don't have to be traded um, with daily supply and demand. But for, you know, the basically to tick, you know, the most boxes, try to look for, you know, daily supply, weekly supply and demand zones, and then intraday CPR um, uh, and stop hunt. Uh, combinations when we get to you know that if prices do come back down to those areas so just as a reminder so um, yeah let's get into uh, the Aussie CAD and um, my bias on the Aussie CAD would be more to the downside um, and this is just basically due to the uh, Bank of Canada uh, being ahead of the um, the Australian uh, Bank Bank of Reserve um, Bank of Australia uh, in terms of their um, monetary policy right so uh, when they're gonna hike rates so once I've decided on which way I'm looking to trade then it's just looking at directions right so we've now come up into this area of supply if we look to the left as well this level has been touched uh, potentially a couple of times so um, it is uh, a level when you think about it, it's been touched pretty once twice is okay all right twice is is all right you you really want to see the fresh the, the best areas to look for a um, a trade is really uh, the first touches of of a zone that's what you're really looking towards but as we are and where we stand now um, you know that really is a level and the zone that's led to you know new lower lows lower highs so in fact that would be considered um, a potential fresher area or it adds to a, a fresher zone even though yes we understand it's been touched but this has definitely be a, been a strong area of supply because it led to a new low um, so for me uh, just looking at this area looking at um, any kind of uh, any kind of uh, short trades so yeah prices have you know come up into that zone and again just looking at where you want to enter from an intraday perspective so don't enter if you know you're not within a supply zone um, a daily supply zone and then just look for um, intraday um, uh, trades here and in fact over the Christmas period there was actually a really nice uh, stop hunt and you can kind of see it from a um, a daily perspective not to get into it too deep because I've got a whole load of other um, pairs to get into but you can see where the stop hunt was above the market right there and then prices went to the downside so if that was a pair you were looking to trade and you were trading over the Christmas New Year's period that was a really nice um, area so um, so yeah just looking at that from a, from a short perspective so if you feel that you've missed out don't worry if prices do pull back because they can pull back into a zone I probably would be less likely to try to get involved in that from a daily perspective probably more um, if we could get maybe just a bit higher that would be the, the zone if you've missed out on on, on this um, of course you can obviously take these uh, this this trade at 93 round number but from the perspective of um, um, is that a, a, a really really good zone of course you want to kind of just zoom out a little bit more and see where um, you know there are probably more fresher zones to look for uh, 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 supply zones but um, for me I think uh, this is probably going to be uh, yeah probably maybe the 94s in fact I'll probably say the for me anyway the the, 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 the area that I'm really interested in if I was looking at this technically would be somewhere like at these 94 round number all right and again just from the perspective of a, a bit of a CPR zone you can see that right there in fact probably see there there are definitely traders caught in their positions here that spike right there so I do think that 94 round number is is really really nice for a uh, for a uh, um, a trade also as well you've got even probably more traders that would have been caught in there as well as that would have been recent resistance 
you can see like resistance you had a week of resistance prices looked like they were going to the downside popped up and then went to the downside so there and in fact there was the relief right there you can see it all right there in fact so that was the capture oh sorry what's going on today let get rid of that and that yeah so this was the capture the pain and then you had the relief right there all within that nice demand zone so that's a nice example of combining daily uh, demand and supply zones with actually uh, looking at looking within their CPR zones as well which adds you know to the confluence so um, for now I think to the short side should be where the path of least resistance is of course unless the Australian dollar uh, the RBA start to uh, um, look to high crate sooner than expected so uh, Aussie Swiss Aussie Swiss looking at buy trades for me out of the two so we've got demand so only looking at demand zones we've got higher highs higher lows being made we've got I guess a level of demand right there as well personally again I probably prefer for zooming out if I'm looking at this this is obviously a bit of an expensive area if we're looking at where we are from a range high to a low fair value is any pullbacks at the moment unless prices make a, a new high this is obviously an expensive area because otherwise prices would have gone higher if it wasn't so any pullbacks into these zones I think are really nice I think anywhere around here of course the best area would be at this 64.2 if prices can come down here but I think any pullbacks into these zones are uh, decent from a uh, from a daily supply uh, sorry the daily demand zone is there a, um, a another setup and I think there is I think there's definitely a stop hunt setup potentially coming as well so from a daily time frame perspective looking at this area here you can see where we're starting to range right so if we're starting to range and that becomes An auction then you're looking at stop hunts below that level so there there and then you're looking at the stop hunt below the level and then looking at uh, a long trade so I do actually like that as well and it comes down into that daily fair value so yep like that I do um, Aussie yen so again, just looking at demand zones, there's a demand zone here. Again, my bias would be to the long side in the risk on environment and you've got a demand zone there. If we're looking at where prices are from an expensive a value range perspective, we've got uh, an area there and a potential area obviously right there. The prices probably might start to come back. So. Um, we do have some demand zones as well, some higher highs, higher lows being made right here. Right there, and then there's one right there. But from where we are, I do think that this might look a bit expensive, so I'm probably looking at you know prices pulling back down to the um, this area here, this 81. If it can, of course, it may not get down there, but if it does, then um, I think that's actually pretty nice of course you can zoom down into you know the lower time frame still look for um, you know trades within that area of course just combine some horizontal diagonal dynamic support and resistance or support I should say you know within that area so that's decent for a potential uh, buy trade but again just looking at it from the perspective of um, highs and lows um, I do think that if this is obviously fair value if this is going to be the low potentially and this is the high then fair value is really where you want to look for um, 
you know, some trades. I don't think there's anything there at the moment from a demand zone perspective. Of course, actually, matter of fact, I do think, and I've just spotted this. I do think that this also this area down here, this eighty to uh, eighty fifth, so forty nine area, is going to be a nice uh, CPR if prices can get down there. Right here. Reason why is because you can see that traders would be caught here level traders are caught in their positions so this becomes a c p and then if prices can come down here that's an r and in fact i think i will set an alert in that area as a as a trade potential trade setup so alert name cpr here we are so that's what i'm looking at from that perspective um in fact i do think potentially that this area is also a little bit of a level cpr that may have um played out a little bit so you can see level level traders got caught trying to go short there's a bit of p here not as much but um and there might be a bit of relief here but um i think if prices went all the way to the upside and then came back down i think that would be actually be quite decent for a, a long trade but um probably a deeper play i think for me if i was looking at this analyzing this uh uh if i want to take any uh if i'm looking at the best location anywhere i think anywhere around here and in fact you yeah, know you could you could make a case for um, for that area as well. As long as you've got enough upside potential. So what do I mean by that is just make sure that if prices do come down here, if this is a level that you want to look to take and prices come down into that CPR right here, and level CPR, then um, just ensure that you know your entry you know, if your entry is there and you've got enough upside. Me, I'd personally say, you know, about two to one or more. Some people say one, one and a half, you know, as long as you've got better than a one to one before you run into, you know, the highs, then you can still, you know, take that as well. As if you're bullish on the Australian dollar, of course. Um, moving on to the Aussie New Zealand, Aussie New Zealand, zooming out. Yeah, I think that is an area. And if I was going to be long or short on these, I would be short buying the um, New Zealand dollar. So prices have come up into this uh, supply zone. Got another supply zone here. But um, I think overall we should want to roll over again the New Zealand dollar. The RBNZ is is ahead of the. Um, the RBA when it comes to monetary policy so um, we could see obviously prices start to roll over from here um, so yeah I think that's that's pretty much self-explanatory nothing really more needs to be said um, uh, yeah I think that's pretty much a straightforward uh, trade if you're looking to get involved in that of course you've got a level above if we're looking at it from a weekly perspective um, there is a weekly zone as well, so you can weekly zone there, and in fact, it's one a bit higher as well. So you've got definitely some supply in and around this area, but uh, I do think from a daily perspective, I think that's actually quite nice. And uh, for those of you who uh, have been watching the videos on unfair auctions, you've got a nice UA below you right there, so that obviously. Uh, must be filled at some point. Again, we don't know when, but um, there is that below you. Um, moving on to the Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar, let me just start off with a fresh brand new chart. <clears throat> Again, I would probably say the dollar should be the buy, meaning that the US dollar, so we're probably looking at sell trades, um, some supply zones around here. Now, when you see something like this and the question then becomes well which one is going to work remember you have to understand that nobody knows which one is going to work now what is the best area to look for a potential trade would obviously be at the 
at the um, absolute high, right? Because if we understand that this was an absolute bargain for the US dollar, because it, it was so much that prices made new lows, yeah? This is an expensive area for the um, for the US dollar. So if we're looking at where obvious highs, swing highs and swing lows are, this is an obvious swing, this is an obvious swing, this is an obvious swing. Yes, these are lower highs and lower lows, but if we're looking at where, you know, objectively we can see where these swings are, then obviously that this is the, the, the 675, uh, 50 area is gonna be that zone, right? So, I think we have come up obviously into a um, uh, some fair value. There is again a um, supply zone right there as well, so we can mark one out. Uh, supply and um, and yeah, I think if you are very very you know bullish on the U.S. dollar and very bearish on the Australian dollar, then that actually is a decent area. Of course, you can also combine that with some other confluences. You've definitely got a zone here that was traded from a support and resistance perspective. Yeah, so you've got the level that's been traded within that zone. So in fact, technically, I do actually think that's decent uh, for a short trade. Again, not necessarily the, the best trade in the world um, uh, fundamentally, but if you are very bearish on the Australian dollar and very bullish on the US dollar, then Think that's actually a decent trade to the downside um, yeah I think that's pretty much it um, and again just as a reminder just as a reminder we know that there's a lot more um, you know to, to, to go into when it comes to our technical analysis I'm just giving you an oversight as to um, you know what we're looking for remember you have um, you know trend lines and trend line breaks you have uh, moving fair value as well as, as um, uh, horizontal support and resistance round numbers um, and as well my, my uh, you know the RSI extreme uh, one of the things that I must 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 have when it comes to um, looking for a trade as well so um, you must employ those things whenever looking at um, uh, you know, just the technical analysis side of things. Uh, so yeah, that's decent. Uh, Cat Swiss, Cat Swiss. Again, we were doing some analysis on this uh, the other day, and um, yeah, obviously my my bias. I say obviously, but in case you don't know, my bias is to the upside, and you can see pretty much what's what's happening. Yeah, demand zone. So. For me, only looking at demand. Not I don't care about supply. I'm not looking to um, you know mark out supply zones because that's not I'm not interested in uh, supply zones and getting short. Um, from a risk on perspective, the Canadian dollar should be the uh, buy, and we can see what's really been happening. So any pullbacks into you know this zone here, I think, is going to be really nice for a potential uh, buy trade. And um, we did go over a stop hunt trade. Uh, a couple of days ago, one second, let me just uh, be at all. So this area here where I've got this, um, my uh, pending order, I say pending order, but the alert, which is uh, 70, uh, 90 around that area, for me is gonna be a nice, or 71 round number, it's gonna be, I think, a really nice uh, stop hunt below. For those of you who understand stop hunts, pretty much it's there, that's it yeah and that level and then looking for a manipulation below that level and then for it to come back inside um but for now daily supply demand i think that any pullbacks into the zone personally it's again it's a it's a tough one to take i do think that if it starts starts to sell off i think that is going to be definitely the best trade to take but of course it might not right prices might continue to go higher we don't know we just wait for pullbacks and then um into into demand zones but my bias is definitely to the upside uh cad yen again really nice trades here and this was from last year demand again just looking at this this and this demand 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 
so I missed out on this trade but again don't worry about FOMOing in there's always going to be a pullback at some point so for me any pullbacks into demand zones are definite opportunities to look for buys so if we know that this is an absolute bargain at the moment and this is also a, a, a CPR here as well um, I'll show you the CPR so you can see that level there definitely traders caught in this area here and then we are going through the pain and then potentially relief right here that 70 uh, 87.50 area but um it price may not get down there anytime soon right so again i do think that this area here is quite nice as well potentially just below that as we head into potential fair value so um i think that's worth a potential buy um could that be seen as a level cpr uh, potentially I'd probably more want to see a bit of more of a pin bar or, or a doji but um, there's definitely traders caught in this area here I think so um, I think it's decent for a potential buy as well in in around this fair value these fair value um, uh, area so uh, so yeah any pullbacks I think into this zone here and especially this zone is 89 uh, two area I think is decent for a buy of, of course if this is going to be expensive at the moment where's the, the bargain of bargains and this is going to be down here so you have to for me anyway that's I think that's really nice for a potential buy but it depends on whether the market is going to move a couple of hundred pips to the downside right um, that's the question but any pullbacks I think into fair value should be uh, decent uh, Swiss yen and that Swiss uh, out of the two I probably think the Swiss might be is just just ahead it's um, when it comes to buying fundamentally but don't like either of them but you can pretty much see that the Swiss franc is uh, is the one so any kind of pullbacks I think are going to be decent into that zone there and again this would probably be considered a level CPR yeah so you've got <clears throat> traders that would have been getting short here and now caught in their positions so some relief right here so um, yeah that area also as well as a CPR like this there yeah but not not a pair that I'm, I'm very interested in at all um i will go on to the dollar index in fact dxy and i think prices are pulling back not to say we're going to trade the uh, the dxy but of course we can use this as confluence and i think the dollar is just basically you know pulling back um, for a potential buy right now this level has been touched once twice so we'll say once this is really the first one and then this is going to be the second one here so I do think again we're more susceptible to potentially either stop hunting or just to this area here but either way um, I think that the dollar is a buy this year um, so far anyway when in, in comparison to obviously other um, uh, pairs or other currencies so uh, my bias hasn't changed for now um, until something obviously changes it fundamentally but I do think that if prices do start to come down to this uh, 95 area I do think that that is going to be a decent uh, buy trade or looked for a potential buy and then we also have as well that's a nice level CPR right there uh, right there and then you've got all these traders that were getting short on the on the dollar caught so in fact 
this is very nice see Pete and then if prices can come down into here I think that in fact that 94 might be actually a really good buy yeah when it comes to uh, the DXY and looking at confluences so if the dollar starts to sell off on other currency pairs um, that's fine just wait for prices to come down to you know probably this 95 area first of all and then if not that 94 60 area I think is going to be really really nice for a uh, for some potential dollar buying again fundamentally if um, if everything stays the same euro was he euro was he um, I would say a bit of a if I was looking at either one probably the Australian dollar at the moment um, just about so if I'm looking at the Australian dollar then I'm looking at short trades so again looking at supply zone all that supply all right we've got supply all here and uh we do have another zone right there quite a wide zone that's got that hard in hard out movement i do like that into that so although this has been although this is touched what's this uh to be like the first touch second touch not a fan again of of, of multiple touches of a level but that has definitely produced some strong supply here so there's definitely value for the uh, Australian dollar so for me I do think that that potentially could be worth um, a, a, a trade if you know looking at the um, if you were looking at this currency pair again not the best trade setup in the world so um, you may want to um, you know reconsider that you'd have to be very very bullish on the Australian dollar very bearish on the on the uh, euro in order to get involved in that um, again you do have the potential for um, some diagonal uh, resistance in that area as well of supply so you can see where prices there there so if prices come up into that zone there that 160 potentially round number that could be actually quite nice from a resistance perspective so um yeah decent horizontal support and resistance you've got um yeah i think that zone there is probably where you've got it simply right at the uh at the highs there's also a level right underneath there as well so just the underside of that as well might be decent for a potential uh, short within that wide area of 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 of, um, of supply but um, again probably zooming down you might want to zoom down into maybe a lower time frame and see if there's anything here but I uh, I'd probably say that the top area of this is 61 round number to 62 would be for me where I would look for any kind of trade and but again just keeping in mind that it's not the freshest area and uh, if you haven't got if you if you're in doubt about a trade either don't take it or just reduce your position size right reduce your position size right um, but I do like this hard in hard out I really really do like that so um, from, a, from a technical analysis perspective that would be um, okay again not not an a1 setup but it would be um, it would be okay um, euro Aussie I think that's probably it um, euro cad right euro cad again my bias is to the downside the Canadian dollar is well ahead of the of the European Central Bank uh, when it comes to monetary policy so at the moment I think any pullbacks to um, to this upper area here which is also in fact a bit of a CPR right there and again we've got the breakout trader who's caught the retracement trader who's caught and then prices have gone to the downside not the prettiest and definitely not the prettiest but um, I think there's definitely a, a case to look for um, traders that have been caught here so breakout 
retracement then we get the pullback some traders may have been relieved here and here but I do think that this area here this capture is is decent and this is more pain and now we've got potential for relief again on the six hours not gonna look fantastic but if you look at that on an hourly time frame chart that's definitely looking a, a lot better so um, so yeah this 46 round number I think is decent for a uh, for a short trade if prices can get up there right no one knows for sure but let's see uh, if it can uh, decent uh, euro swiss i am looking for long trades in fact on the euro swiss i do think that once things start to turn around that euro against the swiss will be actually very decent for a buy um you're starting to see obviously prices come back now to take that trade right now is is not really um advisable i would wait for proof of value proof of value basically being that you want price to establish that this is an absolute bargain right so it's at the moment is there's definitely buying going on here and the higher it goes it just proves that this was even more and more of a bargain so any pullbacks into you know if that turns into strong demand then that's what you're looking at you're just looking at a, a, a pull back into that or you're looking at higher highs and higher lows depending if they produce themselves and a pull back into that but i do think that this year if risk remains on yeah and um europe do start to um uh, get themselves back on track i think this trade here this trade idea is going to be really nice for 2022 so i'm keeping my eye on this one for sure i do think that this probably does look as well like a bit of a stop hunt there was a stop hunt to the upside and there's one to the low side so that right there deep stop hunt and then prices have come back inside so in fact that could actually just be a, a daily um a daily entry so let's see what happens with that um how many pips is that from a uh, all right, about a 20 pip stop, maybe something like that. So, that trade at the moment would be about 70 sign pips. I think it's, it's definitely got a lot of upside potential. Definitely got a lot of upside potential. Um, it's going to be a definitely a swing trade for sure. Um, you might have to hold it for a while, but um. But yeah, I think that's actually quite decent. But if you don't want to take this uh, stop hunt, then you probably want to um, wait for prices again to prove that that is, you know, higher highs, higher lows, then looking for a pullback into that zone or pullback into that zone or even a pullback into that lower zone at 103s. So, um, so let's see what happens with that euro pound. I think the pound is the um, is the one to buy at the moment. Although um, the the UK economy is struggling at the moment with uh, the Omicron variant, but so is everybody. Again, from a stop hunt perspective, nice. There it is, right there. But from a daily demand zone. we've got that's where it was so again probably the trade is right now depending on you know your entry so the trade is definitely starting at the moment it could look to go to the upside but again I'm looking at sorry I'm talking about to the upside like I'm buying the euro um, that's if you want to buy the euro the pound on the other hand sorry apologies I should be really looking at supply zones is going to be here supply supply so um from that perspective again i think you'd have to wait for prices obviously to come all the way back up here to start to look for any kind of sell trades there is it does look like there is an area that has been traded as well extend that back you can see where it's been traded bought bought sold 
sold and bought here so that 80, 84 area I think is decent but again just from a expensive and cheap area then that would be the area there from the top I do think that this also is nice from a stop hunt perspective as well just above that level would be nice from a stop hunt perspective so let's see what happens um, with that but again that really just depends upon whether you know you want to be a buyer or the pound against the euro um, out of the two you would think that with the, the UK hiking rates um, that they are definitely ahead of the of Europe but that could that, that hike came out of um, really trying to stop inflation rather than it being um, a positive move so it depends on how the market interprets it but for me um, the UK I think once the UK do sort themselves out if they sort themselves um, out ahead of Europe then uh, you should this price should want to continue to roll over um, in at least in the short term and in, in, in for the first quarter euro yen and the euro rallying against the yen or the yen pretty much being weak so looking at demand zones at the moment again the euro isn't the the, the, the uh, best currency to buy at the moment but it is against the yen doing its thing so when you buy trades <clears throat> Let's put that there. Demand, nope, sorry. Value range. So again, just looking at where you would probably want to look to trade. I think the, the, the first area for me might be, hmm, there is a case for this area, potentially. That could be seen as a uh, as a bit of a level CPR. It's it's got the C there, but simply because you've got a level there, level there, level there. And traders are looking at getting short here, and then you've got that, so that could be seen as a CPR if it comes down. But um, I think daily wise, I'd probably look for more fair value that one two nine area. If prices can pull back, that'd be the first area I'd look for potential uh, to buy. And of course, obviously, the better area is going to be down here, and uh, probably more, even more looking at a bit more of a stop hunt trade somewhere in that zone. So that's probably where it is there. So that level's been touched once, twice, three times, and then. You can see a probably a stop hunt just below that zone there and then look for any kind of buy trades. So yeah, um, decent, but again, not really a fan of that pair. Although Europe, again, if they get, their, get themselves together, I think it's gonna be a great buy against the end, but just not right now. Euro, uh, New Zealand, um, I think we spoke about this a couple of days ago. Uh, daily demand zone, we've got zone right there so I'm looking uh, I say daily demand zone supply zone because I'm looking to buy the the, uh, the New Zealand dollar so those are the zones where we are um, I do think intraday wise that is very nice from a CPR perspective C and then P and then R nice um, that was also a stop hunt as well uh, this area here anyways um, so any pullbacks again on that intraday I think up here is going to be where I'm looking to get involved as you can see I've got my alert set so once prices start to come up to this zone here I think that's when I want to be uh, looking at a, uh, a potential buy trade if, if prices can come up here of course no idea but that is for me is quite nice as a as a sell trade um, that's it that's pretty much it um, 
euro dollar uh, it's coming up finally coming up patience 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 I want to be short on this currency pair and as you can see I've got my alert set and then I'm just waiting for price to do its thing from a daily supply zone again that level has been touched so many times it was bound to um, come up so um, there is actually hidden supply here this is an outside candle so you've got hidden supply right there as well now um, as much as we're looking at this or I'm looking at this as a as a potential stop hunt prices may start to come all the way up into here and if it does then I'm looking to take a potential sell trade there of course you do want to you know manage that with some sort of confluence and you can see if you go all the way back at that area there it's definitely been seen as a potential uh which has been traded in the past anyway if you go back it's definitely an area that historically has been traded so um I do think that zone or in and around that zone potentially could be nice of course prices could come up even a bit higher All right so this whole area here so you could I don't think there's any support and resistance within that well um, there is but it would probably be somewhere here from a daily perspective anyway I think that's probably where it is and you've got probably an intraday one which is somewhere around there as well and again you can go down into the lower time frames just to get some obviously some more detail on that level 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 so if price does you know just basically go all the way up here or even further higher that's where you know the the, the 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 trades are again none of us know nobody knows I'm trying to predict exactly what's going to happen at this level all we do is we wait for prices we identify where you know uh, a, a bargain was in the past that was definitely a bargain for the dollar why because prices did this and so if prices come back up to this area here then we just look to see if there's going to be something that prompts us to trigger a trade it might go all the way through this level cool I'm not trying to I'm not saying whether it will or it won't but the point being is that none of us know and if prices again come up to here we just got a plan for each one because ultimately the, the, the US dollar is ahead of the of Europe from a fundamental perspective unless something changes for me my bias is always going to be uh, we'll say always but it's going to be definitely to the downside anyways um, so those are the zones that I'm looking at this is also as well a um, a, a nice uh, CPR you can see it there traders who would have been going long at this area here have been caught in their positions that supply so level 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 there capture pain and then that all adds up as well so relief right there so i'm very interested in that in this 15 area as well now um yeah yeah i think that's that's decent as well um pound aussie so pound aussie if i was going to get long on either one this is going to be a tough one um it probably has to be the pound for now simply because they are in a hiking cycle and they are ahead but um, yeah so which means I'd have to be a buyer if I was looking at this so we've got some demand here and we've got some areas of demand down here buying would have to be well, we entered into now a bit of a range between this high and this low right there and um, again I think any pullbacks so any pullbacks probably down to the lower end of that 84 area before looking at getting long if you're looking at this being in that, the overall range from that low to that high then obviously 
you're looking at this area here as a really nice buy um, we're at f just above fair value if that is the range between you know that high that high and that low you can see where prices have been um, contained between you know what's that maybe around about 900 pips 800 pips so I think anywhere around here prices do come down or even down here that would be where we're looking at getting uh, long on that trade but technically um, I don't think there's anything there could be there could be there could be a um, a bit of a stock hunt as well as we are in that range so there right there so if you see prices do something like that then you're looking at um, a decent stop hunt as well trade setup within that uh, if you're looking to buy the Australia um, sorry the, the, the pound pound CAD my bias is to the downside buying the Canadian dollar this year providing all things go well prices actually came up to that area there so not only do we have again from a daily supply zone perspective but what was that that looked like a very nice CPR level CPR trade setup Yeah, traders level level traders going long there and then all of a sudden it collapses on them so C P and then the relief was here um, yeah I think that was very nice uh, daily supply zone of course prices have you know come out to 73 area um, and uh, it's, a, it's a trade I do think if you're looking to take that any pullback into that zone is fine as well because the first touch is okay but I think if prices can come up into this zone or even deeper then that is very nice for a uh, a sell trade um, technically now fundamentally again um, is is the pound the, the weakest trade to take against the Canadian dollar um, no so I'm not really too interested in this pair although um, I do like that technically so uh, yeah quite nice um, technically but just fundamentally I'm not keen on that currency pair pound Swiss pound Swiss I'm long pound over the Swiss or I would be long pound over the Swiss so any kind of demand zones zoom out a bit more yeah I think this is probably where a pretty simple one to be fair anything down into that zone there is going to be um, potentially a buy unless prices start to obviously make higher highs then that becomes demand zone and then you're just looking for pullbacks into that demand zone I think but that would have to happen first before looking at getting um, getting long there is also as well some horizontal support and resistance uh, probably just below that um, could that count as a bit of a level CPU? I probably could. It depends on what happens. If this, you know, shoots through, then I think actually that would be a decent CPR level CPR. I think that whole area there would be a nice level CPR worth a trade if you're looking to buy the pound over the Swiss franc. So yeah, I think that's decent. But that would have to happen first. So that would be capture pain and then the relief um, pound yen I think the pound obviously being the one to buy demand 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 from a high to a low yeah we're, we're definitely in an expensive area when it comes to looking at um, buying in any kind of demand zone I'd probably wait for um, I mean this area is okay 
I think it's okay really because I'm looking at that potentially being a bit of a CPR again not the not the best in the world simply because first of all the time of year 28th of December there's not too many traders going to be caught there but um, and also the candlestick itself isn't isn't a fantastic reversal candle but it can if prices do start to go higher and come back down into that zone I think that's okay see yeah, but again you have to be very very bullish on that on that pound to look to take that I think if anything the um, if prices can come down here I don't know whether they will yeah it'd have to be down in these zones here but let's see what happens Let's see what happens. I don't know whether it, it will come down here anytime soon, but I think those these these would be the best areas to look for. You know, buy trades. I think that area is okay as well. That one's all right. <clears throat> Fresh area of demand um, and a decent pullback, especially if if that is where the range is. Yeah, so it's just above the fair value, so that's okay as well. Um, pound New Zealand. For me, I'm looking at buying the New Zealand over the pound. So, looking at short trades. And looking to buy the New Zealand uh, supply. So, at the moment, again, not the best area if you're looking at what that level's been touched several times. It's been touched several times, but, um, hmm. Let me look at this from a weekly perspective. Um, hmm. It's definitely within that weekly zone. So, again, probably look towards the RSI. You know, if that if that is in the RSI, then I think that should be decent, and it is. I think that RSI extreme. Again, not the best setup in the world, but I do think that. Um, I would look for any kind of trades if I was looking for any kind of trades probably may not be right there unfortunately it'd have to be at really these highs these two 202 levels probably somewhere around there that's a fresher area of um, of supply but um, mm, unless that would be considered a bit of a stop hunt So there's definitely liquidity above that. So that could be because we've got level, level, and levels. So yeah, actually from a stop hunt perspective, I think that's that could be decent if it starts to come back inside. But let's see what happens with that. Um, again, not the best trade in the world to take fundamentally. Um, but I'm more bullish on the New Zealand dollar than I am the um the pound pound dollar pound dollar right so again I would say more bullish on the US dollar but so my bias would be more to the downside but with the uh, pound recently hiking rates it's a tough one to take um, There we are. Um, yeah, I think anywhere within this within this zone is a decent uh, short trade. But again, you'd have to be very bullish on that um, on that dollar and very bearish on that on that pound. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I would look at. Oh, that jumps out at me. Um, I think probably. Um, yeah, I think anywhere probably here and here. I think this, this, yes, it's a wide area, but um, I do think that I think that there there is potential scope for a reversal within those areas. 
especially as we've uh, the, the, the the price action. When you look at you know what price has been doing. You know higher, not really kind of not really major pullbacks within that. And when price when you see prices start to do that into a level, you know you're going to have um, a uh, a pullback at some point. Um, so I do think anywhere within this 36 area is decent for a potential short trade. Technically, again, I have no idea because um, you, you've got two decent currencies looking um, to, to potentially hike rates or hiking rates. And in fact, if in fact, if we're talking about hiking rates, um, the British pound is actually ahead of the US dollar. So, um, um, but I just think economically the US is ahead of the British pound. So again, it's a very, very tough one to take. My bias would be more stronger dollar um, but against the British pound, it's um, it's a very tough one. But if I was looking to buy or sell any of these, I'd probably look for any. I'd probably look for a sell trade, and that's only really because of the um, the pounds. Even though they again they hiked rates, it would only really be because they did it more to do with inflation rather than they were forced into doing it rather than um, it being uh, something that would benefit the economy. Um, New Zealand CAD again to decent currencies I wouldn't normally look to take a trade on but if I had to then the New Zealand dollar is ahead of the Canadian dollar just so again any kind of you know sell trades uh, would be where the where the trade is so we've got um, any pullbacks I think are decent right there and in fact, probably got a decent level for manipulation just right there as well. If we go down to that lower time frame, you can see it. So it's been touched once, twice, three times. So any kind of manipulation above that 0 0.877 area is uh, for a short trade would be actually quite nice. So anything like that, and then it comes back down. Um, I think that's probably it. Yeah, I'm not really too keen on this uh, this currency pair. Technically, um, yeah, lower, high, lower, low. I think this area here is 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 decent. Again, I do like this as well. That is a nice CPR. Uh, that would be the P and if price does come all the way back up here I think that area there that 0 0.892 area is very nice for a some relief um, New Zealand Swiss New Zealand Swiss daily demand Who are you looking at there's no strong demand here it really isn't Although you, there's always an argument to say that there would be demand there or even a bit of demand, in fact, here. <clears throat> I do think that it's not the strongest area of demand, but what I do like about this is it's setting up to be actually a really nice potential stop hunt. So let's see what happens with that. Where you've got move and then it'll just manipulate below that and then you're looking at trades to the upside. So that in fact, I think is quite nice. I'm gonna set my alert around there. That's quite nice. And um, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Um, da, 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 yeah, but daily wise, there's nothing really. Let me look at the weekly. Yeah, nothing on the weekly. But buying the New Zealand dollar is definitely a trade. I'm looking to take intraday. Is there anything intraday? No, nothing intraday uh, other than the level that I'm that I'm looking at. I think for that. So, yep. We're done on that one. New Zealand yen. I've uh, done some analysis on this. 
last um, couple of days ago. Yeah, we were talking about this, and this this uh, was a great trade, right? The two trades right here. That was one, and then there was a second one here. And we were talking about, um, you know, why um, I really wanted to take this, but I didn't take it over the Christmas period. But prices still worked out. I can uh, I can be uh, happy with the fact that my analysis was correct, even though I didn't take the trade um, for obviously reasons that I'm not trading over. I wasn't going to trade over the uh, Christmas period, but the analysis was correct and prices ended up going in, in the direction. But um, daily demand zone wise now, I think we've created a new demand zone, not necessarily the freshest, but it's um, definitely uh, a strong area. Got some hard out there. So any pullbacks into that zone, I think are decent. Uh, if you zoom out a bit more, in fact, no, that level's been touched several times. Yeah, that level's been touched once, twice. So I do think, I do think that this is probably a bit more susceptible to being a stop hunt rather than a pullback to that level that I would really want to get involved in. Of course, it may not get there. Prices may start to make higher highs, higher lows, and in that case, then it's really just looking at these areas here to look for potential buy trades right so if that starts to move higher and higher and higher that starts to look more and more this here starts to look more and more like a bargain right because don't you wish you would have bought down here if prices are all the way up here yeah so as prices then start to come back down that's where look to potentially you know, buy or the first area to look for a buy trade, but it depends on obviously what happens. But um, let's see what happens there. But those are pretty much what I'm looking at. Um, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. New Zealand dollar has to be the buy. Although, again, the um, it's not the pair pair that I'm looking at at all. As far as looking to take the trade, um, there is a buy opportunity. Probably the best area to buy would be down at that 67 round number. That level's been touched twice as well, so I do think that there is a decent stop hunt if prices can get to this area here. I think that's going to be nice for. A, for a stop hunt setup, but um, ultimately, I think the uh, um, I'm not really too keen on this pair. Dollar CAD, um, dollar CAD. This has been an interesting one. I think we've uh, we've come all the way up into that zone once, twice. And that, again, just because prices have touched it several times doesn't mean it, it can't and it won't hold. But um, personally, I prefer not to take or to be very wary of trades that have been touched several times. But um, I think out of the two, the Canadian dollar are ahead of the US dollar. So this now is looking at a buying opportunity for the, uh, for the Canadian dollar. Not a pair again I'm interested in, but decent. And I do think that if prices can come back up to that area there, I think that is going to be very nice for a manipulation to the short side. I probably won't take it myself, but I just like the the level. That level there is very, very, very accurate. Very nice for a manipulation. Um, there are other levels within that as well that you can take. Here we are. Of course, looking at the Canadian dollar as well, um, look at um, oil as well. So um, if oil starts to continue to go higher, commodities continue to go higher, then that should be you know, decent for a short trade as well. But again, against the US dollar, that's a very, very tough one to take for me personally anyway, but I do like this technically from a short trade perspective. Um, dollar Swiss, I am looking to take this as well definitely looking to take this this currency pair um we saw 
a stop hunt there and I think that potentially is turned into a nice CPR right there so daily demand right there but that's also a nice CPR if not if that trade doesn't work out there's a nice fresh area of demand just at that you know the uh, 90 uh, 50 area so I think right now is decent for a buy trade again not financial advice I'm telling you anyone to get involved in this but I'm just saying that this I think is um, from my perspective I do like it I do like that and um, yeah nice nice uh, nice CPR within that daily demand zone if not like I said I think this is going to be the area to look for any kind of long trades yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah. I do like that and um dollar yen this was the trade prices came down into that that zone held and then you're looking at well that prices pretty much went on its way but right now we've got higher highs and higher lows being made so prices came back down to that zone there and then we've got another zone in fact I'll just delete that one and then we've got there and there so again just looking at where we are from a range perspective where we are from price being expensive and cheap which is really value and auction this is where expensive is and this is where a bargain was if I'm looking to buy anything or buy this which I am I'm either looking for a bit of a pullback yeah you know, or I'm looking for prices to make new highs and then looking for a pullback into those demand zones but either way I think we're at an expensive area um, to buy the uh, the dollar yen so for me pullbacks into uh, these areas I think are going to be very very nice for a buy trade um, down into this 13 uh, round number uh, 1250s if we can get down there um, mm, 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 yeah I think that's pretty much it oh, that's, that's, that's where my bias would be anyways um, so so that's it as far as technical analysis is, is concerned of course um, there's a lot more to this um, you know we're, we're looking at you know obviously you know round numbers half numbers we're looking at um, uh, the RSI as well. So again, it's all in the course. It's all in the uh, the channels. Um, you know the confluences. So anything that I've missed out as far as you know the the, the, the details, um, um, it's only because for interest of time I've been talking about this for what's that an hour, thirteen minutes. This if I was to do all of these currency pairs, it literally take me probably maybe about two hours to go through every single thing so um so yeah i know which pairs i'm looking at taking of course i've marked them out and um, those are the pairs that i'm going to be really kind of focused on um for now until uh, the fundamentals uh you know change but um but yeah again just uh wishing you again a, a happy new year um keep posting the charts and um i will see you all in the discussion room and uh let's have a great uh 2022 take care and speak to you all soon